Joe Biden and his wife, Jill Biden. One of the things that jumped out to me in the book is how humbling the whole experience was for you. You know, here you are, this man of immense power uh, in our country and in the world. Um, and you write about this, this Christmas list that you made all, all of them put together every year. And this is from November 20th, 2014. You write, I pulled out my diary and started to write. I did have one big item for my own Christmas list that year, but I was keeping it to myself. Just home from Nantucket, I pray we have another year together in 2015. Bo, 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 bo. Even powerful men can come to realize their limitations when it comes to cancer. Well, look, uh, I'll bet you if I ask in the audience, how many of you have had a family member yourself uh, diagnosed with cancer? Wow. Wow. So you know. You know. And uh, it's, a, it's a terrible disease. It uses every tool in the toolkit to take you down, and, uh, and it levels everybody. I mean, it's, uh, um, and uh, you know, our prayer uh, was, both of us, the whole time, was, uh, um, you know, that we'd have, look, it gets down to, as you all know, it gets down to days and weeks and months. You're not hoping for ever. You're just trying to get by the next, the, the next thing. And so uh, we both, we both very much were hoping that we get we, we get one more Christmas, one more holiday, one more Thanksgiving, and uh, but we knew things were getting tougher. Uh, it was getting harder for him. Uh, he never let it show. Um, uh, the uh, the radiation and the chemo had taken had done some damage. It also done some good, but also does damage. And uh, so it was just about uh, it was all about Bo. The whole family. Tell us about the rosary beads on your wrist. Well, um, I, uh, uh, Bo wore these. Hunt got these for Bo and me and uh, at uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe down in Mexico. And I had visited there. And, um, and, we, and we all wore them. I'm a, I, I, uh, I'm a practicing Catholic. Bo was a devout Catholic as well. And, uh, um, it was more, uh, both of us found solace in the, in, in, in the, uh, in the elements of the church. So it's almost like meditation for us. And so I have not taken off the rosary Bo was wearing when he passed, uh, um, since then, but it's, it's my connection with him. And I'm, I, I'm not trying to be, uh, I'm not preaching. I'm not talking about, uh, it's not even a, about religion per se, it's about the connection. And, uh, and it just always makes me feel good. I, I know he's with me, it's just touching it. Eventually on May 30th, the entry in your journal read as follows, 7.51 p.m. It happened, I recorded in my diary, you write, my God, my boy, my beautiful boy. Did the two of you get a chance to say goodbye? Yeah, we did. Yep. Yes, we did. We spent a lot of time, uh, and uh, and his children, and his nieces and nephews, the whole family, the whole family was there, and uh, um, and uh, we got a chance to. Uh, those of you've been through it, you know, it's a privilege to be able to just let them know. Uh, just let them know. Excuse well, me. We were right there by you know all of us in the in the hospital room for days and days and days and just holding him. But look, it's, um, uh, he, he, he was the first one. The reason we said the book is titled Promise Me Dad. I mean, he was, Bo was always worried about everybody else. And uh, the promise Bo made me make was he looked at me, said, he'd say when he wanted to make a point, he'd say, look at me, dad, look at me. He said, I'm going to be all right no matter what happens, Dad. But promise me, promise me, promise me you will be. And what he meant by that, he knew we'd take care of the family, but he wanted to make sure that I didn't withdraw from the things that animated my life, my whole life. When you promised it in the moment, did you believe you could live up to it? I wasn't sure. Um, I hope he's proud of me now. Um, I, uh, I, I think that's why when I got out, uh, you know, instead of taking some 
very nice, generous offers to do things. Uh, I decided I wanted to continue to work on the things I've always worked on. So you could have made all that money. Well, actually... You could finally make the no, money. No, no, but by, by the way, we're, we're doing fine compared to what we've ever done before. <laughs> uh, I hope you got a good deal on this book. Well, I, I, actually, they were, from our perspective, very generous. But, you know, I'm a professor at Penn. I have a foreign policy school there. I, I have a domestic policy school at Delaware. Jill and I are keeping the Cancer Foundation going, the Biden Cancer mm -hmm. Initiative. And uh, we have uh, Bo uh, was a great protector, and I really mean this, nationally, children. a great protector of abused children. children. That was his passion. <laughs> and, uh, and so, so, that, so that is an amazing list of projects on which the Bidens are working. Yes. But of course, there is only one project in which the world is interested in uh, whether you are working on next. And that is the 2020 race, and we will pick it up there when we come back with former Vice President Joe Biden. And we're back now with former Vice President and possibly future President Joe Biden and Jill Biden. All right, that's the question. I know you say, not right now, not sure. And I know Bo and Hunter both wanted you to run. Are you getting any closer? Any getting any closer? No. Look, <laughs> the, the reason Hunt said it best, Hunt afterwards said, Dad, if we run, it will give the family purpose. It, we've always been best under pressure, Dad, and it will give us something to focus and concentrate on completely. And that was Hunt's rationale for why to go ahead. And Bo did want us to run. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, but I just, uh, you know, you shouldn't run unless you can look at all of you and give your whole heart, soul, and say, you have all my attention. And one of the things we learned, and you know, Megan, a lot of people here know, the second year is usually tougher than the first year. At least that was my experience in the first loss. And so I, I, I knew we weren't ready, number one. Number two, the best way to say it, and I give you my word as a Biden, if the Lord came down and sat here and said, look, the nomination is yours if you accept it now, I would say no. Not now. Why? Because I'm not ready. I, I, we, we, there's so much more to do in terms of this, this finishing this book, finishing the ability to try to win back the House of Representatives. And then we'll see. And I, I become a great respecter of fate. I don't, I, you know, it's not be blunt. I think I'm qualified to be president, but there's a lot of really talented people out there in the Democratic Party. And it's, it's just too Ooh. early. Well, <laughs> once, I start to, once I start to name people, but the most talent you saw is there's this resurgence of so many women and men going out for the first time and getting engaged. And, uh, let me just ask you, let, I know you don't want to name names, but does it, does it rhyme with Maury Hooker? <laughs> well, by the way, Any names no, at all? No, there, 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 there are a whole lot. You all know, right, wait, uh, let, me, let me put it this way. Okay, Jill, let me ask you. Would you be prepared for this, for another presidential run? There have been two that didn't work out, you know, perfectly look, in the family. I always, always have felt that Joe would make a great president. Always. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, uh, Hunter and Ashley and Hallie and I and, I and our grandkids, I mean, I think, you know, we all, we all feel the same way. So... Uh, as Joe said, I mean, he's a great believer in fate, and we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we'll just see what happens. If the opportunity presents itself, I think you'd have one great man here. Mm -hmm. we, we're going we're gonna to hold the vice president over for another block, but before I let you go, Dr. Biden, how do you think, how do you think Melania Trump is doing as our first lady? I think she's doing a great job. I really do. She has grace. She shows toys. Um, she's interested in a lot of things. I mean, she's, I know that she's uh, trying to do a lot with our military families, which means so much to me and Joe. And um, so I think she's doing a great job. Very it's nice. a hard job, you know, yeah. and... and uh, you got to have a good poker face. <laughs> yeah, and she does. Yeah. <laughs> That's and important. She does. And she does. I learned what it was like to be a political wife, sitting behind Barack at the State of the Union. <laughs> When I knew exactly what I was going to say, and I knew the speech, and I'd have to, and I managed to make sure I got it right. Uh, Smile, nod right. your head, look adoringly. 
cow eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. right. Thank you both, Dr. Jill Biden. Thanks. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Mr. Vice President, one more block together. Okay. Looking forward to it. Great. We'll be Thank right you. back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.